So this is part two of the portrait composition. And you can see that I am have a small gesture or a small sketch up of just some basic proportions that I showed in part one. And um, now that I have a basic composition of how wide I want my uh, head and how, of course, long from forehead to chin, um, basic anchors of uh, a, a head. Um, I've determined my chin, uh, where my nose and my mouth is, center of my eye to my nose, and of course center of my eye to my forehead, and then forehead to the top. And um, now I can just have fun. Uh, but what I'm going to try to do is keep it symmetrical, um, keep kind of a system down so I can design the rest of the uh, head and the features and maybe some tones and shadows. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, utilize the grid uh, so I can show you how I would uh, uh, still utilize the grid while maintaining a sense of expression and of course trying to, de to design you know a, a cool um, face you know uh, something pretty much out of my subconscious but again I have the grid as an anchor that I can um, uh, uh, follow to to create some designs and I'm going to just do some simple curves um, connecting uh, points together um, I might get my ruler out again so um, hopefully you'll have your 18 inch um, cork back metal ruler you'll see that in a bit and I can even measure uh, half points even all the way down to a quarter point you can go as you can grid it out as, as tight as you want and that's what's cool about having the grid up there is that I can uh, create a smaller grid in you know uh, and just concentrate on a smaller grid here uh, maybe I split this into four or eight or or twelve and to really get some interesting detail so I don't have to do that necessarily everywhere I can definitely just do that into one grid or even in the face um, so it's a pretty cool way of uh, building a, a drawing out of your subconscious but not necessarily just relying on just you know um, arbitrary marks uh, we'll be doing that later uh, that's a whole other world of, um, of portraiture but uh, I'm going to try to use the grid and um, um, I'm going to show you also uh, the materials that I have which are just graphite pencils but make sure you do have your drawing pencils and I'll show you what those look like or what my setup is before I get started here is my setup what I have here is everything that I need to do my initial drawing. Um, I like to have all my pencils out or maybe at least six but an array of pencils so I can go ahead and grab what I need for any type of specific line or remember carving that we might do with uh, with uh, different types of graphite. I also have my white eraser. Remember your white eraser is uh, primarily for uh, cleaning and for editing completely. Um, we have a, just a simple pencil sharpener or uh, your pocket knife. I always like a pocket knife in case I want to get those edges of the uh, tips of uh, my charcoal or my pencil here um, uh, uh, sculpted to a certain degree. So instead of just a, a boring point, sometimes a point is good, but uh, while you're drawing, you want some shape to your uh, graphite. Uh, a kneaded eraser. Here's a new one here, how eventually how it'll look. Remember, kneaded erasers are not really just for uh, editing or uh, erasing, it's really for drawing and for uh, carving that line as thin as you want, but it's primarily a drawing tool and some tape uh, so we can tape down the drawing uh, when it moves or in case I want to tape up another a sheet of paper on top of that. So always have some tape around. But uh, one thing I want you to do as well is to see if you can go ahead and do some quick gesture marks. You see what I did here of each pencil. It's always good to have kind of a reference on how your uh, 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 graphite is going to, to uh, to uh, work uh, with your specific type of paper. So the paper I have here is the same type of paper as I'm using for my uh, big drawing uh, because I have the same type of sketchbook as my um, larger drawing pad. So go ahead and rip out a sheet of your uh, sketchbook paper or the paper uh, of your larger sheet so you can see exactly how it's going to look uh, when you are using each type of pencil. Now we might just use two, we might just use three, but it's always good to have some reference. So I like to put a little rub mark onto each one just so I kind of have a diagram of a of how it's going to move as simple as this is it, it helps you make some decisions later on down the line um, and you can see how how hard the number two is in comparison to the number eight or the 8b um, and then of course you have your charcoal pencil uh, which is primarily just for darkening, but go ahead and have that out as well. So um, do the best you can 
Uh, remember, drawing pencils are the best. Uh, your regular writing pencils won't really do the job. Those have a lot of different types of things in them. I think they have some sort of plastic or even wax in them. Um, these type of graphite pencils are primarily for uh, the detail and the effects that you want when you make a good drawing. So I'm going to start off here by simply just trying to get some information on some more features. Possibly the bridge of the nose, uh, maybe the brow of the uh, top of the um, forehead here. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to try to work with symmetry, so I'm just going to do some gestures first, but then yeah, I might go in later on and do some more measurements. So I'm going to simply just start off by, you know, um, finding a midpoint. And I'm going to mark those midpoints in this row here of, uh, of squares. Again, go as accurately as, as you really want to. Um, I'm just going to gesture it right now. We'll just do a quick uh, kind of line. But again, you know, um, since I'm drawing standing up, I'm not using my um, kind of writing pencil um, technique. I'm going to be using more of a, a way to hold on to charcoal, a way to hold on to a, a, a different type of a drawing medium. So uh, if you're working stand up, make sure you try to hold on to your medium properly while you're doing these first steps. Again, uh, this allows more of a wrist uh, movement. Uh, you're not so restricted within pretty much a, um, you know, a quarter uh, circle here. Uh, when you draw like this, you have a lot more uh, movement with that medium. And then, of course, you're watching your pressure as well a little bit more because you can you can use your fingers here as a, a pressure a gauge so you can add and let go pretty easy. So I'm going to simply just start here and kind of just start to do some curve forms simply. Again, I'm using my 2H pencil. Um, that's going to be probably the proper pencil to use at this stage. It's it's hard enough to uh, get you some accuracy, but not uh, bold enough that, you know, uh, it's hard to get rid of later on. It's a pretty faint line. So again, I'm really just trying to create some sort of a brow line here, simply. And of course, I'm not really worried about accuracy right now. I'm really just doing some sketch marks and then you can see how things start to develop. Um, I'm gonna uh, work down here again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just do an, a quick attachment, a curved line or maybe even a diagonal from there to there. Okay, um, next step, I'm going to find uh, my downward part of my brow. And I go, of course, with your drawing, you might, you might begin to, um, have a more wider or, or a larger uh, top of your forehead here. You know, you might go all the way to this, you know, straight over here, depending on what you feel like doing. But again, uh, more importantly that uh, you can see that I'm working symmetrical. And as I go along, I'm also going to be cleaning as I go. Getting rid of some of the information that I don't want. Again, this is all really up to you and, and how you want to uh, approach it, whether it's more expressive or like what I'm doing is a little bit more, um, you're more us utilizing the uh, grid a little bit more. Okay. And you can see how I'm, I'm getting some structure, you know, uh, my nose is not going to be a triangle, but again, it's, it's helping me build it. It's helping me kind of form it out using, using the grid. Cause more importantly, what, what we're trying to do here is something symmetrical. Okay, now uh, I'm also gonna make a decision here with uh, with uh, this point here, these two points, and I'm gonna, you know, see if I can go downward to see what happens. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and attach there to there. Again, I can get rid of things if I don't uh, like it. It's not the right line, so. But later on, that might be helpful. And again, you see how I'm kind of, you know, you see some traces of graphite on my knuckles where I'm, I'm doing a lot of kind of compass work, you know, I'm, I'm l l laying a knuckle down and then I'm using my full elbow and my wrist to make that to make that form. Let's see how, how how that works. Don't worry about the smudging. Don't worry about things getting rubbed. 
doesn't matter. Okay, now uh, let's move up to the forehead a little bit. Let's see what, what happens when I begin to attach some, some lines up here. So I'm going to measure about halfway point, just guesstimating from here to here, halfway point. Uh, and then I'm going to start here. Okay, let's go ahead and do a large arc. And again, go in and be sure you clean up what you're doing. Okay, now let's start to kind of uh, get the cheekbone structured. I have this point here. I have uh, this point here where my brow bone ends, these two points there. Let's see what happens when I, and I'm going to measure about, hmm, let's go maybe about a quarter inch. And what I'll do is go ahead and get my my ruler out and um, I'm going to go to about one centimeter down. You can see how now I'm starting to do a little bit more measuring. As you go along, start to uh, maybe make some more geometric or some more measurements to get a little more accurate positioning with that geometry. So I'm going to measure just my centimeters down. And you can see how my my two inch square equals about five centimeters. So with that, I can start to kind of break down some measurements more accurately. I want you to begin a little bit more loosely how I did, but eventually get that metal ruler out and let's make some let's make some uh, more accurate movements. Okay, so now I'm going to try to work on this brow bone. Okay, so I got that point there. I got that point there. I got my three points that I want to attach with the good curve form. And don't forget to breathe, okay? Again. A little. Okay, good. I'm gonna edit the things that I don't want. And the aspect of um, the editing is going to be important because, you know, you're laying these uh, you're laying graphite down and then you're erasing. So even the stuff that you erase you, and, and the traces of your, your earlier marks or the edited marks eventually will create depth in itself. You know, seeing the work or the uh, decisions that the artist makes is, I think is adds to the uh, overall, like I said, depth of the work, creates a sense of layering. All right, so I have my, my uh, brow or my cheekbone here and my brow bone kind of things are starting to work out. Again, I can get more accurate as I go along. You're gonna have probably a different approach because um, your head will be wider or longer or whatever you design. But again, you can see more importantly, I'm trying to work with some oh, with symmetry here. Okay, next step, let's get maybe the mouth sculpted out a little bit. Again, I'm going to get my measurement out Make sure I'm lined up properly. Add some centimeter measurements. You can definitely do inches or quarter inch, um, but I think at this point, centimeters work a little bit more accurate and um, they're just more, uh, uh, more to work with when you work with centimeters. Okay, so I've got the corner of my nostrils here and here. Um, I do also have this point here and this point here, the bottom. Now I'm gonna do a arch connection there. Same thing over here. And you can see how you have something interesting happening with this line here, right? And then this kind of curve in that opposite direction. And after I get this mapped out, I can decide whether I want to go in here and do a cleaner, more accurate line. Right now, we're just kind of sketching. That's why I want you to use your nice thin 2B, I mean, sorry, your 2H. Okay, let's continue on. Um, I have some interesting things here. I have the chin, so I'm going to go ahead and mark out some centimeter lines there, some anchor points. Okay. Going to redo those real fast. Okay. One centimeter, 
two centimeter, three, four, five centimeters. Okay, get some measurements there. And let me make a decision here. I'm gonna see if I can round that chin out here. So I'm gonna pick a point here and just do a quick arch to the corner of that box. Do a little zoom in here. Show you how I'm going to be doing a little bit more accurate. Now, I have a pretty large lip here, but I kind of like that. You know, I can always bring my nose down later on, but I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this character or this individual that's developing. I am going to do a couple of measurement points here though. So let me add there, two, three, got four, got four measurement points. You know, it's not gonna to hurt to maybe do a couple of a couple of connecting lines inside there. Help me out with maybe some measurements, okay? Um, but let's see what I can do here. Let me go ahead and open that mouth up. Let's see what happens, okay, when I connect there to there. Let's see what happens there. And I want you to take some risks. I want you to do something. If you have an idea, go for it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to there. That top of that arch form here. And you can see with just that that mouth begins to open. Now we have some breath. Okay. And you can easily kind of go, okay, well, if I like, you know, let me see what happens when I just maybe close that up a little bit. Just add a little bit of information inside there. I did it real lightly, but I know that I've cross hatched there. So I have a little bit of a, a little bit of darkness inside there. A little bit of shadow, just a reference. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue on now. Um, I have some basic structure. I can go back in here again and clean it up as much as I want. Um, so, uh, but let me go ahead and add some more measurements. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 10. And I'm going to do centimeters all the way down. Um, so just in case I can go ahead and add some lines in there. When I need to. So for instance, you have the top of the eyelid, and I see how I just barely just gestured those uh, when I first did my initial features, the eyes and a nose and a mouth. I'm gonna go ahead and make an eye line there, just so I know that there is a top point where my eyelashes or my top of my eyelid should go. And then of course you can do that all the way down. Now, this is only if you really feel that this would be helpful for you. I do want you to work with the grid. I do want you to at least try to work with this system. But then again, it's up to you on how much of the grid do you want to continue to use. Um, sometimes the grid can be restricting. Um, I don't want you to feel that way. I want you to feel like the grid is helping you, uh, not restricting you. So uh, feel free to um, loosen up, uh, but give it a shot. Uh, work through the grid um, and don't let the grid, um, uh, you know, contain your image too much. It's supposed to be there to help you with uh, uh, the measurements of the symmetrical anatomy of the face. So, you know, uh, do as much as you feel that you should be doing. Okay, next step. Um, so you see how I have some measurements there. Now let me go ahead and um, add a little bit more features. So, you know, maybe I can add another possible corner angle there down here as well okay 
And then I'm going to go ahead, maybe do a measure, measurement point there. And I'm going to widen that bottom of that cheekbone. Maybe make some more emphasis there. As I'm going, I want to make sure that I do my cleanup. And when you see me step away or when you don't see my hands, I'm, I'm taking a step back and I'm looking. And that's going to be very important when you do your piece. These are large drawings. Um, so you're going to need to step back three or four steps and observe it because that's going to give you a full frame uh, view of your composition and your symmetry and it's going to put your 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 uh, visual inspection in the in the eye of the viewer help the viewer look at this drawing all right now let me go ahead and close in here on the eye area and I'll do a little zoom in Show you how I'm going to begin to construct maybe some detail uh, in that eye. Um, so first step is, you know, I want a good eyelid. So I have this point here and I have that point there. Let me go ahead and connect. And I would advise to not, you know, work with uh, straight lines within your drawing. Of course, you have your grid line, but um, when you go into these areas like I'm doing right here, Make sure everything has a slight curve to it. Of course, that's all going to make, um, that's going to depend on what your idea is and what evolves. And I want you to really think of a drawing like this as it evolving. Okay. Down here again, I got this point here, I got this point down here. I'm going to go ahead and connect. Just adding a little bit more, a little more width to those eyes. Okay. If you need to, always go back and re-line some of your past uh, work. What's great about drawing paper is that it, it tends to accept the medium, you know, the graphite in this case. So, you know, it'll, it'll dissipate, it'll, it'll flow to one side by you rubbing it and working it. So you got to retrace it sometimes. Okay. Now, next step is I'm going to go ahead and I want to compress that. That's a little wide for me. I like the way that looks, but let me go in and again, do some measurements inside here. I'm going to go to the top of my row and again, oops, let's go ahead and do centimeters. One centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add another line right here. Okay. All right now I have this line and this line or this cross section and that cross section. Right? But I want to go ahead and have a space in between that nose bone, right? I don't want everything moving to the center. Okay, so I'm going to split this rectangle here into, you know, one centimeter. Now it might be a little off. Doesn't matter. Just Find that midpoint. Same thing over here. Find a midpoint. Okay. We're not robots. We're all going to have some sort of different, uh, uh, you know, variation. But again, the grid is just to help you. So I'm going to add that there. Again here. We see how just with that, I have a, I have a brow bone here or a nose bone, the top of the nose bone right here. Okay. Now I can go ahead. Right, and I can even take that point from here to here, even 
even more accurate. So half a centimeter in between there or there. See the top of the eye to the top of that measurement point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at right, 0.5 centimeters. Same thing over here. I'm going to make a measurement at 0.5 centimeters. Okay, and so I have that line there and that line. You can go ahead and even make another measurement line to even go in between. You see how we, we can begin to compress, really compress that space. And it's all because of that, uh, that grid, okay? Now, going a little bit more accurate. So it's okay if you want to reach in there, have a little bit more accurate writing, posture, or positioning, connect that too. Same thing here, connect that. Subtle curve, but it's effective. Do a little bit of erasing there, kind of get rid of some of that, right? Try to drag that tool. Okay, same thing here. Okay, I already got my measurement. Let's go ahead and do from this corner here to that corner. And try your best to work symmetrical. Okay, and you can see how we're starting to define some detail within this eye here. Okay, now let's work on the bottom of the eye. I have already my measurement there, have my point there. You know, you can go ahead and, depends how accurate you want to be. Half a centimeter there, same thing here. And when you work with this system, What's amazing about it is things that you're going to see in nature um, are going to, you know, they're going to make so much sense because um, it all works within, you know, very similar systems, you know, the, the spiral. And there we go. Now, again, this is just a gestural process at this point. I'm still just swiftly. I can go in in a bit and really define that even more sharper. Sharpen my pencil, right? Maybe use a softer graphite. I'll be showing that in a bit, but I think you can see how it's becoming constructed, um, um, the, the, the feature of that eye. It's falling into space because of the compression of that geometry, right? Um, Eye-wise, uh, or the eyeball, grab a coin, grab a dime or a penny, you know, make that perfect circles. Uh, so it really has that effect of, uh, of the perfection of nature. Okay, so let me go ahead and I got my halfway point here. Let me remeasure this. Again, that was my gesture uh, from my earlier. So I want to make sure I get a little more accurate. Okay. So not bad. There, there. Full point. Okay. Bring that in. Same thing here. Bring that in, right? And of course, clean up. You don't like that? Completely get rid of it. Okay, but what's nice about working with that 2H is that um, 2H will, uh, will stick around just a bit. It'll leave just a trace of itself just to let you know don't forget that I was here, you know. You might want to use me later on. Same thing over here. And we can see how that is developing a nice lid, nice little layer of an eyelid down here as well. There we go. So I'm going to start to go in and do some more detail on some of the gestural areas you can see over here where i've done a little bit of that already things are a little tighter things are a little more accurate uh, this side's still pretty loose um, so go ahead and get your knife or your pencil sharpener and let's sharpen that 2h as sharp as you can and i might have to go inside there at this point and move into more of a writing position to get some of those curves so you know here's where you're going to have to alter your body around and really really kind of um uh, let your 
elbow drop or raise pertain, uh, depending on the curve that you're going to be doing. And again, don't worry about any rubbing. Um, so I'm going to go inside here and just go ahead and make this a little bit more accurate. And just kind of outline everything. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab a coin. Um, I have a nickel here, an old buffalo nickel. And I'm going to go ahead and even though that coin is a little bit, it's bigger than what I've drawn, your eyeball is a lot bigger than, than uh, what you we see. So I'm going to grab the nickel and that works perfect for my from my size of the portrait that I'm doing. You can go ahead and grab anything you want or just do it freehand. But I'm gonna make it bigger so later on, you know, it'll look like I'm actually covering a full eyeball as I do my eyelid. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Make sure it's accurate, make sure it's centered. Uh, for instance, it's uh, the nickel should be centered within this line here. Again, as accurately as possible. And I have an old buffalo nickel here that I use over again uh, quite a bit of times when I'm doing faces and st stuff like that. It's just the right size. And you can see how, you know, I'm going to have to fix this eye. It's a little off when I added my circle within that measurement. Okay, all that's okay. I can fix all that as I go along. So let's continue. Getting things And with this drawing, I've already decided to use uh, the line of the geometry. You might want to, you know, erase a lot of it. You might want to just use it as measurements for your idea. But I'm really digging in with that graphite pencil because I want to see it. I kind of have a uh, almost a tribal or a futuristic image here that I'm going to try to work with. See how I can get that sharp edge, do a little erasing. What that's called, or what I like to call it, is a ghost line, where you outline your area that you want of accuracy, then you erase everything else, and that sharp edge will stay. It'll, it'll create a little, little ghost line there. Okay, so you see how accurate you can get that system here. And be sure to take your time. That is the key. It's make sure you take your time and you have plenty of, you know, good vibes going around your drawing area so we can get these things as clean as possible. Okay, let's move to this side over here. Show you how I am going to complete this. Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and start to outline. Do a little rubbing as I go along just to clean it up. Have my elbow pretty high. See, I'm raising my elbow, bringing my elbow down. Turn your body into an instrument. Okay, drawing is not unlike yoga or, you know, in a way, um, different types of martial or meditative movements. Here I'm going to have to fix this. Okay, so here's my eye. I'm going to make it right there. there you go. Much better. Same thing in here. I'm going to have to fix that. And only go as, you know, perfect as what feels good. Your concept of perfection is different than mine. But just showing you how to, but just showing you how to uh, use the grid to create some interesting effects. And more importantly, um, 
you're building this head or or I'm building this face here out of a uh, my subconscious I mean you know with that and a that with the help of the um of the grid there you go but it's being you know um it's being born out of nothing I haven't used a reference I haven't uh I'm not looking at a photograph. I'm not looking at another piece of art. I'm using the grid. And I want you to do the same thing. I want, I want you to you know, experience uh, what happens when you follow some sort of a system. You know, very similar to how you know, we look and, and how our identity or our, the way that we look physically is made. It's, you know, a, a system of DNA, and a system of, you know, historical lineage, where we come from. And you can see now I'm developing some accuracy and I'll get a straightforward shot so it doesn't look you know angled so here is the frontal view and you can see that I've cleaned up the eye area pretty well I'm pretty happy with it that's as clean as I really need it in order to continue on with the mouth area but remember always step back and take a long look at it in fact just stop grab a cup of coffee something to drink you know maybe something to munch on and then come back and uh, just stare at it for a while and and let your process and what you've been doing speak to you and make some decisions um, you know uh, in your mind first before you just uh, approach it so always kind of you know take some time to look I'm going to try to start with some uh, shape here as well to try to get that uh, cheek kind of flowing back into space. And I'm going to get the chin uh, area worked out and the mouth um, and then, of course, the nose. So I'm going to start to work down. And then at some point, I'm going to stop there and then begin to work on the background and see what kind of designs or some maybe headdressing uh, that I uh, am thinking of right now. I'm kind of thinking about a an interesting Native American um, a person here standing with maybe some regalia, uh, maybe some interesting feather forms, or maybe some interesting hair uh, uh, kind of uh, rolls in a sense, uh, uh, and maybe some large loop earrings or something. Um, so as I'm going, I'm thinking about who is this person? Um, you know, search your subconscious. Um, when you do portraiture of any sort, whether it's sculpture or um, or um, you know drawing like we're doing, and you're and you're working in this method that we're working with, uh, using your subconscious and of course building the drawing from the grid and 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 letting it immerse out from from um, the void, you know uh, you must pay attention to who is this uh, character who's speaking to you. And I know that sounds, you know, a little uh, esoteric, but. Uh, I really want you to try that because that's how you really dive deep into your imagination to reach for those unique um, um, things. Um, so uh, the mouth here, I'm going to start to darken stuff up as well. So I'm going to get a, a softer pencil, probably my 8B uh, or my, um, I believe my 6B or my 6H. I'm going to have to look at my diagram again and start to... Uh, add some more bolder line and darking up some areas. So I'm going to darken up the mouth, darken up the eyes, just do a light gray, you know, not doing anything super dark right now because eventually I might want to start adding some mixed media, a uh, colored pencil, um, maybe some markers, but I'm still mapping things out. I want you to do the same. I want you to have a good um, plan in pencil before we start adding color or any type of tones or, or shades or, or uh, shadows. Um, but um, again, frontal view, let's take a, a zoom in again so you kind of just see some of the structure. And um, 
what's really amazing about working with the grid is how much of an extension it gives you, meaning the, an extension of your understanding of anatomy and features that we have stared at all our life. You know, we've looked at our mother's face, we've looked at our father's face, we looked at our loved ones over and over again. And um, what's amazing about the grid is that it will help you with that memory. It would help you uh, remember what it looks like uh, or what a typical face looks like. And um, I do know, again, that there are all types of different types of faces, and that's why I want you to uh, uh, design your own. Um, because if you design your own, um, it will be a true individual identity. It will contain all of that. Um, so uh, I'm going to continue on again with the mouth area and add some more information just to kind of start to get some of these um, uh, blank spaces here and there on that side and that side. Try to get them filled out. I can do everything from design facial tattoos or maybe, you know, uh, some, some forms. You know, again, this does not have to be a realistic version. Again, it can be somebody that you uh, create as a, as a character. Uh, maybe this character has tribal facial tattoos. Uh, maybe there is a, a sense of metallic uh, form to attach to this face if you're doing something a little bit more uh, based off of, um, you know, futurism in a way. Um, so keep going. Remember to stop and look. And um, by all means, have fun. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of work down here at the bottom. Um, I do want to make sure that um, I've thought about my ideas beforehand. Before I do that, let me go ahead and make some more measurements inside this area. I want to get that mouth a little bit more dimensional. So I've got seven centimeters. Actually, there's five centimeters right from here to here again. Two inch box. I'll go down here. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here is just simply add some form to that lip. So I'm going to go ahead and make a down. And of course, whenever I'm adding a little bit of opening that mouth just a, a bit to see if I like that. Get a little form inside there, you know, top of the lip, okay? But also I have some interesting things I can do right here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more geometry here. Possibly give me a reference line here, like so. Okay. Then I have Maybe that leading up into the nostril, giving me some flow right there. I like that. I think that's going to be nice. Okay. We'll clean up work. Okay. Now I've got the nostril here. Let's see what I can do. So let me go ahead and add some geometry there. So I got the top of the eye box. See how I have a, a good a good line lining up my eye. So I'm going to measure up here on that part. One, two, three. And same thing over here. Okay. Now I have my top of my nostril here to here. I like that height. Of course you can do any height that you want, but I like that height. Okay. Let me see if I can just do a just quick curve. Again, you see where this line crosses that point. That's where I decided to keep that nostril height. And you can see how now I'm, you know, kind of, you know, moving pretty swiftly as I design. Um, and you'll get the hang of it as you go along. Now, remember, here is my, there is my, uh, my nose 
top of my nose bone here, right where the top of that skull, that forehead skull begins, right here where the forehead begins, you have that bone. I gotta make a decision here on how to kind of connect that down to the nostril. Okay, well let me go ahead and break that down again. Add some geometry. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have this point here to that point. I'm gonna go ahead and make a line right there. Okay, same thing. Make that curve, connect that line to that line. All right, let's go ahead and add some geometry down here. One, two, three, four, five. And I can probably decide to take that in. So let me try to connect that to that point there. Adding, you know, a sense of, um, shape to that nose. Of course, all this can change, of course, later on. A little cleanup work, okay. Now I have the tip of the nose here. I have um, I have this point here and this point here. What can I do there? I'll just go ahead and bring that down. Just like, just bring that down. You know, that's a little illusion to maybe a tip, okay. When I get some shadow inside there and get the charcoal pencil, maybe the softer um, um, maybe 8H or 8B. I'm still using my 2H here. Um, and then I can really start to define that, but that's looking pretty cool. I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, now let's go ahead. Let's get this uh, cheek here. I got the cheekbone. I got the bottom of the cheek. So I have this line right here, and I have this these two points from, you know, my geometry there. Let's see what happens when I make a curve form there. Right from that nostril. Same thing over here. Curves one there. See how I'm essentially did the same thing that I was doing up here with those curve forms, bringing out that that cheekbone nicely, and I'm liking that. Yeah, I'm liking the way that's looking. Okay, now let's go ahead and work down here again. Let's, let's bring that back. Let's see if I can get that bottom of the cheek back. So what I'm going to do? Well, I have this cross point here, so which means I have this cross point there. Let's see what happens when I just Try to curve that in. Same thing over here. Okay. Let's curve that in. Kind of brings that cheek back. Maybe flow this a little bit more. Okay. Same thing over here. Give some structure, some, maybe some muscle structure to that cheek. Things are kind of working. Okay, now next step. Let me go ahead and um, decide what I want to do with the chin here. Okay, here's where I can probably have some fun. Maybe I can streamline, meaning I can take that same line here and bring that down. I have this point there. Might as well just get some geometry here. That might help me out with some decisions. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, up here. I have multiple lines for my, my, uh, okay. And let me see, let me, let me, let me choose the second one here. That line to that line. Okay. Maybe I can do a sense where from that point, right? See what happens when I bring that there. Okay, and I'm down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in for you. I'm gonna move a little faster now, I'll show you. Hopefully you can get to a point to begin to use that straight edge measure and kind of flow with the idea. Remember, everything's supposed to be in harmony with your imagination. Don't let it, don't let it control it. But it's almost like a tool that you're using, almost like swinging a, a knife around or a sword around, you know, you have this, this beautiful straight edge that's giving you a lot of courage to uh, to make some of these shapes. Okay, there's that line there. Okay, we try to bring that in. Okay. And a little cleaner. Good. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Yeah. You can see how I'm bringing that, some dimension to, to the uh, face here. Okay, it's kind of pulling back into space emphasizing maybe the jawline here. 
It's amazing what that this uh, this streamlining can do. This form lining, the north Northwest Native uh, uh, Americans who did all those beautiful yellow cedar and red cedar masks. You know they were masters at this. Definitely take a look at the Northwest Native, particularly the Haida um, um, cultures, if you really want to get um, some excellent examples of how to work with form lining and streamlining. Okay, now let's continue on down here. Okay, what can I do here? Okay, let's get some geometry down there. Okay, one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. And you eventually you'll develop a system. Maybe it's every half inch that you want your um, your your uh, your system here. Maybe it's every uh, you know eighth of an inch. Go as far as you want. Okay, so um, I have this. Let me go ahead and see what happens when I get a line down here. Same thing line down here right to that central point right in that center point gives me just a little little sense of uh let me do a little racing here clean that up now that i'm got a little bit more courage i can definitely just go over what i did in the very beginning and make sure you do that ghost line and you can see how uh pretty easily i'm starting to develop some dimension and some uh, uh, lines that help pull that or push that jaw back into space. Now, let's start to do a little bit of tone. I think I'll put ready for another. Let's tone up that mouth just a hair. You know, I might want to work on the shape of that that mouth there. Okay, cross hatching, just going opposite directions. Try to keep your wrist tight. Just adding a little bit of tone inside there. It's gonna help me later on. Not going full uh, dark here. I'm, I'm just, just like I said, it's almost like just a reference that there is going to be where the open mouth is. Clean up that edge. Let's go ahead and begin to just add a little bit there. Okay, now you see how dark that is. Now I have to make some more decisions here. So let me go ahead and darken some of these forms up, some of these edges. Got to make everything stronger as you start adding tones and shadows. Okay, so clean some of this up. Down here. Get that darkened up. And you can see how I'm starting to develop a good sense of uh, detail as I go along. So I've zoomed in down to the mouth because I've been doing some work there. I'm wanting to change it. And I want to show you what I would do if, you know, I had a different idea or if I just don't like the way it's going. So I'm gonna get my white eraser out now and erase in places that I want to redo. You see how that white eraser just takes off a lot more. Again, you know, you're never going to get it completely um, clean. Don't worry about that. That layering is going to help you. So you see, I have everything already. The information is still there. I haven't got rid of it. So it's not like, um, you know, you're redoing anything. But let me lift this for a bit. So I'm going to um, go to this direction here, right? And I like this top. Okay, get rid of that top one. I like this top thickness instead of that bottom thickness. And I do have this cross point right here from that uh, part. And I'm going to go ahead and split that in two. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go even tighter with my geometry. So I'm going to go down, you know, about one thirty seconds. Make a mark right there. Okay. Right. And then I'm going to come down here and do the same exact thing. One thirty seconds. And that's where I want my little lip crease there. 
Okay, I like the way that looks. Now down here, now I can continue to draw this part, right? And redraw that part. You shape that part, okay? And cross hatch that area. So a good example on how I would fix something if I wanted to open the mouth or widen it or anything. Maybe that could be an eyeball. Just ways that we work through it. And you see how I use my wide eraser and that really does a lot of uh, work to just to get rid of the information. And again, you see that layering helps. You know, the fact that I can still kind of see, don't consider it, you know, a mess up or that I can see my accent. Just think of it as, an, as just another dimension, a past dimension that didn't work. Happens a lot. Sometimes we move to different dimensions to figure things out. Sometimes we're stuck there too for a little while, but we have to work our way out of it. Now, let's go ahead and let me add this information there. Clean up this end. Clean up that end. I'm going to go a little darker there, but I'm going to go ahead and see how that looks first. Before I go completely dark. So let's go out. Much better. And even that tonal range there gives it a little bit more depth, a little more like there's a tongue in there or something, um, some internals. But uh, as you can see, I've finished. I like that much better than what I originally had. Um, so a good example on how to fix something when you don't like it. So I've backed up here the lens so we have a wider view again. This is uh, almost a stopping point for this video. I wanted to do one more step before we end this session and then there will be another video for part three well, I will continue on with the background and the torso and then more detail. Um, but what I want to do is just at least gesture something in the background. Uh, remember, a big part of uh, having a drawing look as consistent as possible is to work in the whole, meaning that uh, I, at some point take a break uh, in a certain area and do some work on the outside area so it doesn't look like your drawing or your painting or whatever your design is is going to have focuses that are that aren't consistent you know unless that is something that's intentional but typically it's not so you see i'm going to stop here even though i can continue all day long by by uh, getting tighter and tighter with that geometry but i'm gonna go ahead and think about uh, what i can start uh, uh, doing in the background so it's in my subconscious as I'm designing that I do have these things that I've already made some decisions or at least some some ideas and he's he or she or this person is staring at me there's a certain amount of um hypnotic uh, a look about it that I enjoy but I also want this uh, figure to be listening so I'm going to accentuate some sort of hearing devices or or, or accentuate uh, the ear part of the of the head so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of geometry first um, so I'm going to uh, choose two boxes which is four inches and I'm going to go ahead and switch to my millimeters oh I'm sorry my centimeters and that should be about 10 centimeters and let's break that down real fast 10 and let me go ahead and move down here And again, I can use uh, these measurements here later on. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So remember to work the drawing as a whole rather than in parts. It's a large sheet of paper. We wanna disperse the energy as much as we can throughout. Um, okay, so uh, let me go ahead and do a line here. I went up a bit, but that's fine. I'm gonna do the same thing here. 
Okay. Now I'm thinking of just some form or some shape that direction. Um, go ahead and make sure I do some geometry at the top. One. Okay, now let me see if I can do a curve form here. So I've got this point here that I, I'm going to decide to do a shape. Same thing down here. Okay, got that point there, so that should, if I want, go ahead and draw a line, why not? Just for my measurements. Okay, do the same thing here. Again, we're just gesturing the outside. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay. So now, boom, okay. So that's the uh, line there. Get vertical line, and then we go ahead and connect. It's a nice curved form. Same thing here. Connect. Okay, now I'm going to emphasize this line right here. And, you know, it's always good to start off with larger shapes. I'll zoom in so you get a, you know, a different view um, before we go along. And that just gives me something to already um, work with. Um, and I can go ahead and let's, let's repeat it. Let's see what happens when I have a repeated shape. Okay, so we have uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we go ahead and draw a line. Just following some pattern, you know. Okay, so let's see what happens when I connect those. There, seems to be radiating out, interestingly. Same thing here. You see how I'm switching my, the way I'm holding on to my medium, depending on the curve that I want to achieve. Learn how to switch from your writing stance to your, okay, drafting or your drawing stance. Okay. And that's good enough for me right now. Um, you can continue on with gesturing that outside. Again, I'm going to go back inside these areas and break some geometry down to get some interesting forms and shapes. But this could be, you know, an, a, a beginning. You see how I have the eyes and then they're radiating out, uh, radiating out. I'll go ahead and do a frontal view and then we'll be done with this session. Okay, so here is the frontal view and the part two process of how to do a portrait composition. And I really enjoy what I have going on right now. Um, hopefully you'll be able to develop some sort of uh, imagery within, you know, the first two steps here that, that you're comfortable with and you're, you'll be able to continue on with uh, adding and, and um, using the geometry and utilizing symmetry and, you know, creating an image, building an image um, out of your subconscious with the help of the structure of the grid. Uh, I do like the way that my um, my uh, side background uh, listening device here that I have on each side is radiating out. It really matches the um, angles and the points of the, of the eyes. And I enjoy what's happening with the chin. It, the chin is uh, being sculpted uh, to my liking. I like the way that it's sticking out into space. And it's just a good start. Uh, again, next uh, video we'll be continuing the background, adding some torso, um, and then uh, adding some more detail uh, in areas that I'm that I want. I'm, I'm thinking about adding some interesting geometry to the forehead, almost like a, a third eye of some sort, or just some structure, or this arch point form here, this ridge top here. I can see me continue on with uh, almost like a skull structure, like the really defined cheekbones, and almost making this character almost transparent, almost ghost-like, like, like uh, kind of there but not, you know. Um, so uh, go ahead and let's see what happens when you start uh, 
going inward and utilizing the space between the two inch squares and remember to uh, use the straight edge uh, take advantage of the uh, the fact that uh, breaking these squares down into smaller squares will help you achieve the symmetry that we are investigating here and you can see how those eyes really do radiate out nicely uh, with the side crescent forms here it all kind of merges in and that's what's great about using the grid is it, and 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 adding curve points you know from one point to one point you, you're working with some very very uh helpful natural ways of uh creating an image um so again i hope that you all are enjoying this first step of building your symmetrical portrait composition. I hope everybody has a good time and I hope that you're at peace with drawing and I look forward to seeing what you end up with. Thank you.